Bigger Bro 23. So I've got a uh, hot faucet over here that will not shut off. Um, you have to really tighten down on it to try to get it to stop dripping. So what we're going to do is we're going to change to both hot and cold. Now I've already torn down the hot side because I had to go get parts for it. I had to get a valve seat and the proper washer. But I left my valve seat at uh, the plumbing supply store, unfortunately. I wanted to show you how pitted it was. But this is a pretty common problem, so I'm just going to show you guys how to break this down and how to do this correctly. A lot of people only do washers. It goes a little further than that if you want your job to last. So, let's start. Okay, first off, we're going to need a few tools. They did have the socket wrench for the shower valve at Ace Hardware. Mine was a 15 16 this is a 29 30 seconds slash 31 30 seconds. So this will work just fine. You want to get a um, large Phillips screwdriver. You're going to want to get a little pick. You're going to want a Phillips screwdriver, possibly a little ball peen hammer. Have this on the side or just a small hammer. You don't need a big hammer. You're going to need a valve seat tool. So if you own a home, you're going to want one of these in your arsenal for sure. And then of course, um, a big old crescent wrench. All right, let's get started. Okay, so at first I tried to just come in here and take off the handles, but these have not been taken off in God knows how long, so they're a real bear to get off. So what I do is I take a little bit of penetrating oil the day before I'm going to do this. So last night I came over here and, and I put a little bit of this three-in-one oil. You can use PB Blaster liquid wrench. I prefer liquid wrench. I just didn't have it at my local hardware store and I didn't want to go to Wally World. So what I did is I put a couple drops on the top of this screw, let it sit overnight. I did the same thing on this one too. So what that does is that hopefully will penetrate in there, break up a little bit of that calcium and corrosion and enable us to just unscrew it. You may have to have a second pair of hands to hold this um, for you. Um, so when you go to wrench on the screwdriver, it's not gonna just turn with the faucet. Okay, um, so I have turned off the water downstairs, the main uh, water supply. So sometimes I'll put like a, a stopper or a towel or something down in the bottom, just in case you drop any parts, it's not gonna end up in the um, going down the drain. Okay, so we get that screw out. The next thing is sometimes these handles can be quite corroded. Okay, so they just don't pull off. So the technique I like to do is I take a screwdriver and I'll go on this side, this side, and what I do is I try to work it back and forth, okay? And then from the top and from the bottom, and what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna kinda wanna go like this, like this, up, down, up, down, side to side. And that will work this loose, okay? So we've got that done. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this outer collar. Yeah, we're gonna clean those up when we get done here. We're gonna unscrew the outer collar, okay? Now, this is where you want the crescent wrench. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get your crescent wrench and you're gonna to wanna to break this first nut free. So lefty loosey, okay? So we're gonna take that off. Okay, we're gonna slide that off, set her down. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our socket and we're gonna put our socket on. And I needed a little, uh, I needed to, to persuade this a little bit because of the way the sheetrock was back here behind the tile. So I took my little ball peen hammer and that's how I got that in there. Don't need a big, uh, big hammer, you, you know, to get the job done, just be a little patient with it. Uh, some people are going to have no problem with this because the the um, hole will be large enough in diameter. If you have a fiberglass tub, you may need to get a Dremel and waller that out so you can get your socket in here. Now this is kind of one of the budget models where you could just put your screwdriver in here and go like this. I prefer not to do that. So I take my big 12 inch crescent wrench slide that in there 
I take my big crescent wrench and get a grip on it and then take it out that way. That's the easiest way to do it, the best way to do it. You don't want to do any undue stress on this valving system in here. Um, you want to just kind of break it free in a real uh, quick and uh, straight fashion. And by using the uh, big crescent wrench, you can get a grip on here and do that. So that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you could be stuck with having to go back and pull out your manifold and everything, and that's just not going to be good. Okay, then that piece comes out just like that, pull it straight out. Now, on my old piece, and like I said, I left actually the washer and the, um, the uh, valve or the, um, the little uh, collar piece, the valve seat which is one of these. I left that at the plumbing store, unfortunately, but you'll see on this one. And what happens is the, the washer gets squashed down and then the valve seat also pits and corrodes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one back together real quick, and then we'll go to this one. Uh, I always start with the hot first because it just seems like over the years, every time I've done this, and I've done a lot of these, the hot is always the hardest one to get. So hopefully this one is not gonna fight me too much. So. Anyway, um, I'm going to put the new valve seat in first. That's what it looks like inside. So make sure you've got it all cleaned out. Maybe just take your finger in there and just clean it out. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that big screwdriver that I showed you. And I like to use this. I think this is a number four big screwdriver here. And I like to take this and put in here okay as you can see it's got notches right there there's the four notches so that screwdriver happens to fit in there really well I like starting it with this because when you go to use the actual tool you always hit against your faucet so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go in here like this we're gonna put that in there I also like using a screwdriver because I can feel if it's seating in properly. All right, so I've already done the hot side as far as disassembly, so I'm gonna take the cold side off. So what I found out yesterday was when I went to try to get these screws out of here, I, I could not get them in there, they were cor or get them off, they were corroded. So what I did is I took some three-in-one oil, or just some penetrating oil, and I got in there went behind the screw, put a few drops on, then what you do is you take your little hammer and you can either do it uh, like this, like on the back of the screwdriver, or you can just lightly tap the screw itself. Now you don't want to mushroom the screw or ruin the, ruin the screw, but what you want to do is you want to tap this. By tapping it, it lets that um, uh, that um, oil go in and uh, get back into the thread. So I did that yesterday, so 24 hours previous to this is when I did it. By doing that, it made it so I can just hold on to the handle and unscrew the screw. And then you don't mess up the head and it's well worth doing. I have a, a towel down here in the bottom of the tub. So there's that. Okay, so now we have that broke loose. The problem is, is after these sit on there for so long, as you can see on the hot water side, see it's all hard water deposit and everything. And here in Utah, we have really hard water. So these are not easy to get off, but I do have a technique for that. What I do is I take the back side of my screwdriver and, I, and I'll work it. I'll hit the top, I'll hit the bottom, I'll go to the side, and we're just gonna sit and work this back and forth. We don't want to get crazy with it, but now see how it's starting to move a little bit? See that? We're getting a little bit of side to side movement. Let's get a little up and down movement here. Don't use your hammer, use your screwdriver. I'm sure your shop teacher didn't teach you that. This is what works. Okay, now we're going to wiggle it and see if it wants to come undone. Nah, a little bit more. There we go, 
let's try that. No, okay. Patience. Use your Harbor Freight screwdriver for this. There we go, look at that. Okay, so that's what we did. We just kind of moved it around and broke that loose. Looks like some of the penetrant tried to get in there too. So we'll put this down in the bottom of the tub. Like I say, I have a, um, a towel down there. Next thing is, we're gonna take off this little collar assembly. Just lefty loosey. Okay, and we're gonna pull that right off. And then we'll clean that up. All right, by the way, the water to the house is turned off, so um, you don't wanna to forget to do that. Now, let's see, hand me the 12 inch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the big crescent and we're gonna get this first nut off. We have a, a nut right here that holds this, that helps hold the shaft in and then we have the, the main nut that holds the rest of the fixture in. We're gonna to wanna to get onto that. And that broke free pretty easy. Now, I'm using a pretty big crescent wrench. Um, I would much rather use a, a large crescent wrench and not have to fight it than say just a small one that'll barely fit on this and then you just have to do a lot of work and it's just not not the way I want to roll. We'll pull this little collar off, set it to the side. Now we need to get the, the tool and get in here and get this piece out, out right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and I can only go in about this much. I want to have a little bit more purchase on this. Um, on this nut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my bitty hammer, just kind of go in like that a little bit. And what, what this is doing is this is kind of pushing some of that sheetrock back there. Because I really, really want to work that in there. It's not letting me go in very far. But you know what? This little collar was pretty easy to take off, so let's give it a shot. Okay, on these little uh, budget units, the idea is you can take your screwdriver and go in there and do this, okay? And I'm sure it'll work, but the problem is it'll put a little bit of undue stress at an angle on it, and I, and I really want this straight, because the idea is I don't want to mess up this manifold back here at all, so I'm going to grab this with my big gnarly crescent and put it on the right way, okay? And then this big crescent should make this job pretty easy. And there she goes. Look at that, no fuss, no muss. Now if I stuck the screwdriver through there, I'd still be working on this thing. I would be probably darn near throwing tools at this point because it's a lot of work when you do it that way. Make the tool do the work, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this piece out now this sucker here was hard to shut off too. The hot water was the worst of the two, but this wasn't quite so easy. And we're gonna take a look at that. And that gasket is worn. So, or the uh, washer I mean, so we're gonna replace that washer. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our valve seat tool and we're gonna Go in here very carefully, get in there with your valve seat tool, and break it so at least it's loose. You want to hand me that big screwdriver? Then what I want to do is I want to take my big number four Phillips and stick in there. This just makes it a lot easier because as you can see the faucet gets in the way and we're going to pull that out. Now, what happens, especially on the hot water side, these tend to pit around the edges. And you'll get like a little little chuck hole, little pit hole in there. And when that happens, it actually eats up that washer. And it just tears these things apart. So I always replace the valve seat. So I do the whole thing. I not only do the washer, but I do the valve seat. I'll stick my finger in there, make sure there's no gunk in the threads or anything like that and then what we'll do is we'll put a new valve seat in this is what a new valve seat looks like 
Now, unlike these old price fisters, you have to go to a specialty plumbing store. And that's what I did on this, like uh, Ace Hardware, uh, uh, Home Depot, or Lowe's will more than likely not have it. Now, cold water doesn't seem to pit up as much as hot. My hot side just had big old pits in there and not good. So these things are like, I don't know, 40, 50 cents a piece maybe. So they're well worth doing. So <clears throat> I could put this into my tool and put it back on like that. The problem is I can't get one full revolution because when I go around, this hits the faucet. So what I found is I just take my big old, this is optional, but I take my big old screwdriver, my Phillips, as you can see, it looks like it's kind of keyed for it. I'll take that, I'll put it in there, and just carefully, without touching the edges, just go in there and screw that piece back in. I get it just kind of finger tight, pull it back out. I'll take my valve seat tool, get in there like that, and just give it a little, mm, like that, just a little. It doesn't need to be really tight. And that part is done. Now what we need to do is we need to put a new washer on this. Okay, so let's take the screwdriver. We'll undo this little screw here. Okay, I'll set it to the side. Want to hand me that little orange handled pick over there, please? I have my helper in here, Zach, handing me the tools. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, and this is optional too, you can do it however you want, but I'm just used to using picks. And what I'll do is I'll take this out. And if you can see how that's kind of all grooved in there, so we don't want that. Okay. But it's because for all these years, it's been meshing up against that valve seat right there, that little seat. Okay. So let's clean this up just a little bit. Just go around it with your finger. We're gonna grab a new rubber washer. Now some of them are printed on one side. They'll have a little number in it. That one has a little print in it, it says 3 8 So we don't want that one to go against the valve seat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little numbered side and we're gonna go towards the back of the fixture here. All right, then we'll put the screw back in. Now, a lot of people make a mistake when they get to this part. I've done it. I've done it quite a few times when I first started doing these. What you do is you don't need to get all really crazy tight. You just kind of want to get her seated in there, and that's about it. You don't want to crush it or anything like that. Okay, now... We're just going to basically reassemble. So we've got our new seat in there. So we're going to take this and carefully, now yeah, see, without touching the sides, we're going to want to get this back in there. There we go. And we'll get that started. Okay. I'm going to hand tighten this real quick. Okay, then I'm going to take this shaft and back it out pretty much all the way. And the reason why we're going to do that is because if you have this all the way counterclockwise, like, like, like your faucet's tightened, it won't allow this to get a good seat. It won't tighten in properly. So we're going to do that. Let's grab our big 12 inch here. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a torque. <clears throat> Just like that. Don't want to go crazy tight on it. Okay, because we... If we ever have to service that again, we want to be able to get it out. Okay, there's that. We're going to put our little collar nut in there. I don't know if that's the real name for it, but I've been calling it that for 20 years. I'm going to put that back in there like that. Somebody put some Teflon tape in there. You really don't need to do that. Okay. Remember, this needs to be counterclockwise all the way okay so this will all get seated down in here nice and we're just going to kind of give her a little nudge okay after i film this i'm going to come in here and 
clean these up. I'll probably soak them in some CLR or something and clean these up. And we're going to do this. And I'll knock a little bit of this powder out of there. And we'll put this on. And <laughs> put the screw back in. Okay, that's the cold side. So that's pretty much good to go. And like I say, when you reassemble all this, you don't need to get crazy. Um, now sometimes this screw will get loose just from being used, and then these, these will start getting kind of loose and jiggly. So you can do a few things. You can go buy a new handle, uh, put that on, and um, that will usually work because it's usually the handle side or the, the decorative side here that really rots out first. Um, depending on how old your faucet is, sometimes you can just replace that whole um, shaft piece in there. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to reposition the camera and then here we go. Here's my technique for doing this. I stick the valve seat on the tip of that screwdriver. I go in there. This is like playing operation. You don't want to touch the sides. And you just go in there. If it fights you, go counterclockwise until you kind of fill it feel it seat in there and then tighten it back up. Just get it kind of finger tight. Then get your tool, go back in there, and give her a little cinch down. Okay, that should be enough. I'm going to put a new washer in there and smooth side towards the the seat and the printed side towards the backing here. We're going to take our screw. And like I said, especially on the hot side, you don't you don't want to really mush this down very much. So here we go. Just a little bit. They won't fall out really. Okay, I'm going to turn this counterclockwise. Okay. We're going to go in here like this, trying not to touch and get any of this stuff on those threads. Look at that. It's like butter. All right. Let's grab our tool. Now this side, I got it to go all the way down in there because I wanted a lot of purchase on that. I've generally had the hot side fight me more than the cold side. Kind of what I was trying to do on that cold side. Okay. I do it by hand. I get my big old gnarly crescent wrench. Give it a little cinch down like that. Not too crazy. Pull that tool out. Let's grab our collar piece here. Put this in. The old crescent out. Well, if you guys don't have a good crescent wrench, get one. I don't know if I can put a link to this snap-on wrench on Amazon, but I will. I'll try it. Or I'll put a link to a good one. Doesn't necessarily need to be a $200 crescent wrench. Um, but it'll last you your whole life. Thank you, Redneck Bill. All right, we'll put this on. So what I'm gonna do is after I get through filming, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna soak these, I'm gonna clean these all up. Then I'm going to go and just take, put a little bead of latex caulk around there, just for giggles, just so it doesn't get behind the back wall. And we're going to put this handle on. And then we will screw it down. Where'd the screw to that go? There it is. Screw her back in there kind of maybe wiggle it sometimes. Okay, that should be pretty good. We're not gonna go crazy tight. And that's it. So we are done. With filming and everything, I don't know, what have I been on this, maybe a half hour or so. But anyway, there you go, that's how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these off. Then I'm gonna go down 
stairs and shameless product and plug fast orange yeah, we'll check it out. i gooped a bunch of fast orange around here uh you know i had these off in the sink and uh, i took a, a sponge and uh cleaned it right up and it's because the fast orange has the pumice in it so it acted like a polish and it made these old things look dang near brand spanking new i didn't have to soak them in clr or anything like that it gave them a really nice polish so I'm pretty happy about that. I'm gonna probably do that with my handles. That is great. Awesome. Okay, so let's continue and okay, do the test. a finished job. It's a runner. That uh, pumice hand cleaner cleaned this up pretty good. Uh, no leaks, no drips. You don't have to wrench on this stuff anymore to turn the water on and off, or off anyway. And nice and smooth. Looking good. All right. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave questions or comments down below. And, uh, yeah, please subscribe.